Hey, it's me. I've been thinking about you lately. I miss you. Call me back. Hi, guys. It's JJ, and this is Travel Tuesdays with JJ. As stated in my other videos, due to today's climate, please check all entry requirements before booking your trips. Have safe travels, and these are the 10 amazing things to do in Dubai. Burj Al Arab. Overlooking the Persian Gulf from its perch between Jumeirah Beach and the Palm Islands, this stunning building has wild architecture buffs since it opened in 1999. Its curved glass facade, modeled after the sails that have graced Dubai's waterways all these years, shelters a world-class, uber-luxurious hotel located on its own man-made island. The hotel not only houses the tallest atrium in the world at nearly 600 feet high, but it is one of the tallest hotels in the world. Architecture aside, amenities include revolving beds in some suites, as well as a helipad. In case you thought arriving via a complimentary Rolls Royce was too pedestrian. <laughs> but you don't have to stay at the Burj Al Arab to enjoy it. And let's face it, most can. Those who aren't crashing at the hotel can gain entry by grabbing a bite at one of the ensuite restaurants. Among them are Nathan Outlaw, which features a floor to ceiling window guarding a massive fish tank, and the Sky High at Al Muntaha. This next location was one of my favorites when I visited Dubai. It's the Dubai Mall. Skirting the Burj Khalifa in downtown Dubai is every shopper's paradise. The massive Dubai Mall is one of the largest shopping centers in the world and houses more than 1,300 stores. Even if you aren't interested in buying anything, a visit to this immense retail center is a must. The Dubai Mall also contains numerous entertainment facilities such as an ice skating rink, my favorite, was one of their bowling alleys. Also, there's a movie theater and several kid-friendly attractions, including an aquarium that houses thousands of underwater creatures. If you happen to be around at night, stop by the Dubai Fountain outside of the mall. It was created by the team who designed the Bellagio's famous dancing fountains. The fountain features nightly shows set to a mix of Western and Eastern music. Jamira Public Beach. Within walking distance of the Burj Al Arab is arguably Dubai's best strip of public sand. Sun seekers come to this lively shoreline to revel in Dubai's bright rays, while water sports enthusiasts take advantage of the calm turquoise waters of the Persian Gulf. Jamira Public Beach is also equipped with a children's playground and plenty of barbecue and picnic areas. Just make sure you come early as the area grows steadily more crowded throughout the day. Number five on the list was one of my favorite experiences in Dubai. It is the Burj Khalifa. Although it's not recommended to experience it the way Tom Cruise did in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, the Burj Khalifa is a crucial item on any Dubai agenda. Rising 2,722 feet above the city, that's a whopping 160 stories. The Burj Khalifa proudly holds the title of the world's tallest building. But that's not the only title that the tower's got under its belt. The Burj Khalifa is also the tallest freestanding structure in the world, and it's home to the highest outdoor observation deck in the world. So you know what that means. Gorgeous views. Bastakia Quarter. Amid the towering skyscrapers of downtown Dubai lies the Bastakia Quarter, the city's historic district. This former fishing village earned its name from the numerous Bastak Iranian traders that settled here in the 19th century. 
The charming little neighborhood houses the popular outdoor cafe, the Arabian Tea House, and several art galleries that feature the work of local and international artists, among others. Some of the restored buildings also include wind towers, which was an early form of air conditioning. The Dubai Museum is also located here. Recent visitors found the Bastakia Quarter to be a nice respite from the glitz and glam of downtown Dubai, and enjoyed seeing what the city looked like before all of its developments came to fruition. Some recommended taking a quick affordable Abra, which is a boat ride, across the Dubai Creek to a market where trying the street vendor's ice cream and purchasing Arabic perfumes are a must. I know, I know. I did say I had other favorites on this list, but this is by far on the upper end of my most favorite experiences in Dubai, and it's a must-see. It's the gold and spice souks. Dubai is and has been a titan of trade for centuries. To get a sense of what commerce was like back in the day, take a stroll through one of the city's traditional souks. They're also referred to as bazaars. The gold souk located on Dubai's Creek South Bank in the Deira specializes in glitz and glamour, featuring glittering displays of necklaces, bracelets, and earrings from more than 300 retailers. The Gold Souk is one of the most renowned gold jewelry trading centers in the world. In fact, approximately 20% of the world's gold passes through this market. But if you're not one for gold, don't fret. The Souk also sells platinum, diamonds, and silver. You're also guaranteed to get what you're paying for. The government tightly controls what is sold and by who in the Souk. So you don't have to walk away thinking there's a chance you may be holding something counterfeit. On the other side of the creek lies the pungent spice souk, where vendors hawk flavors from across the globe, including cinnamon, ginger, and chili. This is also the place to stock up on saffron, as you'll find the delectable spice at a much lower cost here than you would back home. Ski Dubai. Surreal is one way to describe Ski Dubai. Even when the city is enveloped in sizzling triple digit temperatures, this massive indoor winter wonderland is never without fresh powder. The Middle East first indoor ski center, Ski Dubai, boasts five ski runs, the longest of which spans to more than 1,300 feet with a 197 foot vertical drop. A freestyle snowboard zone, a chairlift, as well as a room for toboggan runs and snowball fights. Inside, there's also the world's first indoor black run, ski lessons for the kiddos, as well as a penguin colony. Dubai Museum. Sitting near the Bustakia Quarter, the Dubai Museum offers visitors a glimpse of where the monumental city has been and where it's going. The museum occupies the Al Fahidi Fort, which is the oldest building in Dubai previously used by the monarch and as a defense station. Today, the museum features a variety of wings dedicated to Dubai's cultural, historical, and geographical landscape. Wander around and you'll find everything from goods sold in the 1950s, located in the market's wing, to information about the marine life that lies under the Arabian Gulf, appropriately located in the sea wing. There's also a folklore wing, that will likely keep younger ones entertained. And a courtyard equipped with models of local boats and bamboo houses decorated with furniture used during that time period. I recommend visiting if you're into history or looking to beat the heat for about an hour or two. It is recommended, and I think it is a must see, if it's your first time visiting Dubai. 
Dubai Desert Conservation Reserve. When the glitz and glam of the urban Dubai grows tiresome, I strongly recommend escaping to the Dubai Desert Conservation Reserve. The UAE's first national park sits on the outer edges of the city and occupies about 87 square miles of the Arabian Desert. The reserve mainly acts as a research unit, but travelers are allowed to explore the area with one caveat visitors aren't allowed to tour the reserve by themselves. Luckily, the park offers many different types of activities that will cater to travelers with varying interests. Thrill seekers can go sandboarding, dabble in archery, or go dune driving on luxury four-wheelers. Those looking for a more relaxed experience can soak up the spirit of the desert on low cushions in the dew tents for a delectable dune dinner or arrange a more intimate private desert dinner, which is what I did. Amazing, there's also a show. There's also traditional camel treks available, as well as horseback rides, and even a class on falconry. Visitors can also camp on site or retreat to the luxurious Al Maha, a luxury collection desert resort and spa at the end of the day. The interesting flora and fauna, as well as all of the fun activities, including barbecues and camel rides, made this experience unforgettable for me. Last but not least, this is a bonus pro tip. One of the most amazing things that you can do if you don't know what you want to do is check in with your hotel. The hotels normally have tour guide companies associated with them. So if you wanted to do a evening or afternoon dune ride to one of the shows, you can book that directly with your hotel. A lot of the activities can actually be booked through your hotel, depending on the type of hotel that you stay in. So definitely check with your hotel for the activities or excursions that they have available. Well, that's it guys. That is the 10 amazing things that you can do in Dubai. I had a wonderful time there and I recommend all my friends and family to go. Again, since we are in a very interesting time, make sure to check the entry requirements before traveling to Dubai. Well, I wanna thank you guys for staying until the end of the video. If you are not a part of the family, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If this video helped you in any type of way or you like the video, go ahead and smash the like button. This helps me continue making these videos for you. And also, if I missed anything on these guides, like I said, I love making these guides because I love to travel, but I also love to give information to anyone else visiting these beautiful, wonderful destinations. So go ahead, comment down below, must sees or anything that I missed. Well, again, thank you again for stopping by and you have a wonderful one. Until next time, bye.